Okay, we're going to look at scripture today from the Bible, King James. Let's start off. We got tons of scripture to look at. Matthew 18 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, Jesus speaking, there am I in the midst of them. And we're going to look at the Bible, what it says about house churches. And is it, a, is it a sin to have a building? No. But I think a lot of work, money, and effort put to a building for a church is a waste when it can be put to missionary. If the Lord would ever give me a church again, I will not purchase property. I'd rather rent and whatever extra go for the work of the ministry. Because I have seen people go all the way back to the first time I was saved. Going all the way back to 1987. I've seen more people go involved with the church building than lost souls or souls at all. I know a church right now that split off my first church and they were boasting about the original pew. And yet they don't evangelize. And I think needless money goes into buildings. Now, I am not speaking out of my tongue. I had a home church in Norwich, Connecticut with my family. We gave in our dining room. My wife, Lisa, kept the room clean. It came time for so Sunday morning, Sunday even midweek services. We had people come out and we helped people. Until the city of Norwich came and shut us down. And my neighbor spoke up and said that there, there's been no bother, there's been no, been no uh, disturbance. And we know he had the church there. We knew the work he was doing. He witnessed to us. And, you know, I had to have fire exits. I had to have multiple potties. I had to have zoning. And they shut us down. That's why we're not active. And then when my wife died, we had moved to another new area. That area was my father-in-law's house. And he said, well, let's, let's continue our church here in his living room. And there was just a lot of stress with my wife dying. And, and I went and found a church that I would put him into when the Lord moved me down to Florida. My goal, my opinion, and what we're going to look at the scriptures, I, I go house church. I've had, and coming back again once this coronavirus and all that, I've had Bible studies in parks. They work quite well. We found a place where we could be sheltered from rain. And I'm looking forward to do that again. I don't personally take part in, in work parties and giving money to, I give money to missionaries and the work of evangelism. And it said here, verse 18, uh, chapter 18, verse 20, where two or three are gathered together in my name. You realize there are places in the world today you can't meet in a building? We're going to go to the book of Acts. They could not have a building for a church. They would recognize who they were. It would be a big red stamp to say, here they are. Let's go get them and kill them. We're in the coronavirus right now. You know how many beautiful, pretty, pretty buildings and massive uh, stained glass windows and, and great expense has been put into seating and carpeting and they've been closed, locked up and still to this day, uh, April, not, May 8th, I think it is, 2020. The buildings are closed. And with coronavirus, with the building closed and few churches are open, we're relying on live internet feed. All right. If there's a family, two or three gathered together in the name of the Lord, how many families instructed by the husband, father of that family, has had a church in his family quarantined and taken the spiritual rule 
of his house. And yet that's scriptural. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Father, husband, you're in charge of that family, not the pastor. First Corinthians fourteen thirty five. Pastor only gets them two and a half, three hours on Sunday and forty five minutes on midweek service. You got your family seven days a week. First Corinthians fourteen thirty five says, and if they will learn the women. Anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it's a shame for the women to speak in the church. If women have questions. They're supposed to run to you, husband. You're the spirit, spiritual guidance of that house. The, the, the order of the family is God, Jesus Christ, the husband, father, the mother, uh, the wife, the mother, the children, then the job. During this coronavirus and your church doors are, are locked up and closed up, you're supposed to be in your house teaching your family the Bible. Back to Matthew. I guarantee that has totally <coughs> failed. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 24. And we're going to look at the scriptures. King James. You got another Bible, it ain't going to read right. Am I against church buildings? No, I'm not against them. You can use them, they're good. But what's the Bible say? Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings, the word of God, of mine, Jesus speaking, and doeth them, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. There's a house, there's a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. The rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So, starting off with the word house, Matthew 16, 18. What is your house built upon? It better be built on the rock. Matthew 16, 18, and I say unto thee, Jesus speaking, that thou art Peter. Upon this rock, Jesus, not Peter, will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I believe in all, I don't think anybody's going to rebuke me on this. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, midweek service, church, amen, glory to God. You go to a building, amen. But it's also Monday, Tuesday. Now my midweek service is Wednesday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You husband, you father are instructed for your family to bring them to Christ and teach them the Bible in your house. You better have a foundation because the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a worker that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's written to you, Christian. There are houses all over the world are built upon Jesus Christ. And there are houses all over the world are built on everything but. And when the weather comes and the storms come and coronavirus shuts down your church, you better have a foundation of Jesus Christ. My family still, ever since 2004 or 5, 
I have also, besides church, have led my family in family Bible reading, family prayer, and family Bible study. And then I don't know what year it was, we set out to start our own church in Norwich, Connecticut, before the city shut us down. From that point forth, I set forth and I, I told my wife we were always going to rent for a church. I don't believe in purchasing property. and That's me. If it's not you, okay, that's fine. I don't believe in it. I'll give my money for, for the growth of Christians. And I'll give my money for the evangelistic work of, Christian, uh, of, of lost people by Christians. That plain and simple. Matthew 10. Matthew 10. I'm going to show you the scripture. Okay? And you got an argument, you take it with God. Matthew 10. Am I saying, you know, church built? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying what the Bible says. Matthew 10, 12. I go to a church where there's a building. I go, my church building was an old Jehovah Witness Hall. Praise God, Jesus Christ moved in and heresy moved out. 12, 12 14. Jesus speaking to the disciples, 10, Matthew 10, 12. When you come into an house, salute it. And if that house be worthy, let your peace come into it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your word, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Now, Jesus, when he sent his disciples two by two, said, don't go run to the synagogue. Go find a house. And they'll take care of you stay in that house and teach them in that house and teach the people of that city of that house. I believe. I have another belief. I believe every city and town is to have a local Bible-believing King James christ Center church. Every town. What are you going to do when the gasoline, let's say gasoline, comes one day obsolete, or you will have to give an account for your gasoline and mileage? I don't believe in mega churches. I believe a church should be founded and there's a guide and direct people of that church to go out and, and ordain elders in every city. And that's scripture. I live in Daytona Beach. I think there should be a Bible-believing church in Daytona, Bible-believing ch church in South Daytona, a Bible-believing church in Port Orange, a Bible-believing church. Uh, 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 I'm trying to think the areas around here. Uh, I can't think. Uh, Holly Hill, Ormond Beach. I'll, I'll, I'll give where I come from in, in Connecticut. There should be a Bible believing church in New London. Should be a Bible believing church in Waterford. Be a Bible believing church in East Lyme. Bible believing church in Stoynton. Bible believing church in Norwich. Bible believing church in Wesley. A Bible believing church in Groton. A Bible believing church in uh, Mystic. A Bible believing church in Ledger. A Bible believing church in North Stoynton. A Bible believing. Every single town and city. I don't care if you have two or three members. Bible says two or three people gather together in the name of Jesus. There he is. I had three, four people in a park under a gazebo, and we had great time studying the scripture. And we're going to get back to that again, Lord willing. Lord willing. So, Matthew 21. Matthew 21. I'm not going to say it's a sin to have a church building, but my personal opinion, 21.13. Not me. I, of all the churches I've been in, I know one church, a midweek service we met in the pastor's house. I talked to two people, three people who had the house church in their home. I am one of them. I am one of them. 
And when I had the house church in Norwich, Connecticut, there, the money went to missionaries as we went out. Money went to gospel tracts when we went out to the city of Norwich. Matthew 21. What did I say? Matthew 21, 13. And he and said unto them, Jesus speaking, it is written, my house, there's the temple, that's the temple, shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Look what he's saying about the temple. Before it, it, it's destroyed in 70 AD, he calls the temple the house. You know what people do? They say, their church is the house of God. And you're referencing to the temple, which is Old Testament. Your church does not have the Holy of Holies. We have the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. No more in the Holy of Holies. You got to have that rock foundation of Jesus Christ. Now, everybody just go out and start a church? No. Lay, lay no hands suddenly on you. You got to be studying. You got to be well trained. That's the job of the pastors, not institutes and Bible schools, which are training young men out of the King James Bible and out of belief of what the Bible says. I've been in churches. The main thing, let's get people in here and let's keep them here. That's wrong. I know a church right now that has a, 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 a institute. They bring people all over the world, all over the United and world into this institute to be part of their institute. And then the students stay there. They don't go back home to, to teach others what they learn. They stay. Not Bible. Come learn the Bible, okay? Then you go back home or wherever God sends you. Plain and simple. 2338. 2338. He says, Behold, your house, the temple, is left unto you desolate. The temple is desolate. It's dead. It's gone. It's destroyed. The dumb of the rock is there now. It is no more a building until after the rapture. It is made of human people, born again, Bible believing Christians that are adopted by God through Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. I am the church. My family that is saved is the church. What do you do with people who are in prison? And they got a messed up, fouled up, because I've been in eight or more years in the prison ministry. I know somebody right now who's in prison, and they, he's got a terrible time with the religions that come in there and teach. You think the prison buildings are the church? You're a fool. You think your stained glass windows are a church? I can take you to a church back in Connecticut. You can go look at the stained glass windows and the Jesus and the apostles are all black. That's not the church. I can take you where I grew up as a child in the church building. Catholic church, Roman Catholic. That ain't the church. Now, I could take inside that building, and there are probably saved Christians in the Catholic Church buildings who are part of the body of Christ. And there are people in the world today that are born again, Bible believing Christians. They're saved, they're, they're going to glory as much as I am, and they don't have a church where, where they're meeting. You're not going to build a church building in North Korea. No, you're not. You're not going to put a sign out in front of your church in North Korea. All are welcome. If there's any Christians meeting in North Korea, they're meeting underground. And that's the church. They're meeting out in the woods. That's the church. 
Whitfield came to America preaching the great revivals, and some of those revivals were out in the fields. That's the church. Some of those revivals were in mills where I had been visited in, in Connecticut. That's the church. And he went into church buildings and preached. That's the church. I'm not talking about the buildings. I'm talking about the people. I'm talking about the people. Matthew 26, 16. I don't say buildings are a, a sin. Uh, Matthew 26, 16. That's not it. I have an error. Oh, well, move on. Mark 6.10. Mark 6.10. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Matthew 26.18. And he said, Jesus said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, Jesus saith, My time is at hand, is death. I will keep the Passover at thy house. Don't we celebrate and have part of the, of the Lord's Supper, which is to celebrate the last Passover with, with the, the, the bread and the wine, the symbol of the death, burial, resurrection, and the coming of Jesus Christ? Don't we take part of that ordinance in the church? That was done in a house, not the temple, and not a church building. In the house. The upper room was a house. That's what I want to show you. Mark 6.10. Mark 6.10. In a house. And he said unto them, In what place soever you enter in a house, Jesus talking to the disciples, send them out, and bide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you when you depart then shake off the dust made under your feet for a testimony against them what are they doing in that house they're preaching they're teaching they're praying in the house not the synagogue the house the house has become the central point of preaching you know what you know what the places were in connecticut it was called the meeting house. It was a building called the meeting house. That's where all the central, the central part of most cities and towns of New England early were the meeting house where they met. There was also a place called the Greens, G-R-E-E-N-S. This is a, a, a couple blocks of grass and trees. And ministers and preachers and evangelists would go to the Greens where everybody's doing business and, and meeting and, and having family picnics, they would go to the Greens and they would preach and teach the Bible. The Salvation Army would go to places like this and in England, they would go to the Greens, they would go to a gazebo, they would set up and they would play hymns at the Greens. No building. And sing and sing praises to God and preach. At the Greens, and they had buildings too. They had buildings too. Mark 14 14. Mark 14 14. And wheresoever ye shall go in, say ye to the good men of the house. The master saith, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he'll show you a large upper room furnished, prepared there, make ready for us a house in the upper room. Isn't that important? Luke 6, 48. Luke 6, 48. You can pause this. I mean, we're, we're in a rush because we got men, much, much scripture. A lot of it is going to have to, I can just read it. I don't need to say anything, but 648. He's like a man that built his house and dig deep, 
laid the foundation on a rock. Paul says that rock is Jesus. And when the flood rose, the stream beat violently, and the core virus upon the house. Core virus is shaking the buildings of the churches today. Many are locked, closed. Many buildings will be going up for sale. Many buildings will not be properties of the church any longer. Because people haven't been given money. Beat from living to you upon the house, and it could not shake it, for it was bonded on a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon earth, against which the stream beat violently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. You know, a lot of churches, I mean, the groups of people, many of them, and I won't name, you know, organizations, I won't name uh, uh, denominations, but you know, a lot of them buildings and those people are going to fall. Because they're not built upon the rock of Jesus Christ. You know, you may have a church, King James, Glory to God, and if the Lord comes today, that wonderful great church might be of use, might become property of the Antichrist. Where the time and effort and money could have gone for missionaries or evangelism. Just stay in and out. I mean, Martha was much clumpered. With doing stuff, Mary heard the word, and Jesus said that was the best part. So that was Luke that Luke twenty two, Luke twenty two, verse ten. I mean, I hate to throw those cheap shots in there, but I'm just isn't it scripture? And you got a problem? You got a problem with scriptures, not with me. Luke twenty two ten. Hey, I may be lonely, but I'm still serving the Lord. I still love the Lord. And hey, God loves me. Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. 22.10. Behold, when he entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entered in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, the master saith to thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? Do you know where the last Passover was? It was in a house. According to Jesus, mine is pink because I have to mark my own words of Jesus. But if you got a red lettered Bible, in the house. Matthew, Mark, and Luke say in the house where the Passover was held. Not in the church building, in a house. And there are more than two and three in the name of Jesus, including Jesus himself. Our ordinance of the Lord's Supper comes from the Passover. Plain and simple. Acts 2 2. Okay, here we go. And people who are, who are getting, oh no, he's in the book of Acts now. Acts 2 2. And suddenly there came, this is, they say, this is where, around the foundation of the church. Okay. Foundation of the church was Jewish. Acts 2 is Jewish. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing of mighty wind, and it filled all the house. Where was the first preaching of the book of Acts? Where did the Holy Spirit move and shake? In the church building? No, in a house. Where were the disciples after Jesus died and in fear with the rooms closed? In the upper room. Where was that? That was in the house. Plain and simple. Uh, Acts 2.46, I hope. 4.6. Acts, okay, Acts 
My writing's terrible. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple. Continue daily. Daily. That means every day. One accord in the temple. Okay, there they are at the temple. And breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat and gladness, single, singleness of heart. What were they doing? They were going to the temple street preaching. They were having time of, of, of prayer, time of, of Bible reading, a time of study, a time of fellowship in with the, well, they weren't Christians yet, but the, the believers of God through the blood of Jesus Christ in house to house. They went to the building, the temple. They didn't meet in the temple. They couldn't have services in the temple. The Jews would have ran them out. And they'll be arrested at the temple pretty soon, uh, John and uh, Peter. Where were they meeting? Where was the first meeting? In a house. Well, we call it a church house. Okay. 542. We'll get into 542. We'll get into as we move with the scriptures. We'll find out where we're looking at. 542. Daily in the temple. There they are again. And in every house. They cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. They are street preaching at the temple where people are lost. And when they are saved, they are gathered together in the house teaching Jesus Christ. You know where they went for the lost people? They went out of the house. They went into the world to preach the gospel. And when they gathered together like believers of like faith, of like mind, of serving God, children of God, then they came together in the house and taught Jesus. They would have not have put in a sign, all are welcome. Hey, I'm just showing you what the Bible says. You got a problem, you get on your knees, say, God, I got a problem with what your word says. Me personally, if the Lord ever gave me a church again, I'm going to rent. And we will pay our rent and everything else and all time and effort will be to evangelism and growing Christians. The person that witnessed to me, Joseph Coswell, who's part of that mess I mentioned in, in the church of the, you know, we got the original pews and all that, never took time ever to grow me in the Lord. All right, this is what the Bible says, you need to be saved, and then boom, left me. We need to spend time with Christians to, to, to grow them. We need to go out in the world and preach to them. I know, you don't like it. Uh, chapter 8, verse 3, Acts. 8, 3. And Saul, as for Saul, Saul, this would be later Paul, made havoc of the church, okay? Church. Saul is making havoc. He's persecuting the church. Enter into every house. Now you put church house. We'll see in a moment that the church house is not a building. Had they had the first Baptist church of Jerusalem, Paul would have been easily finding them. And he would walk through the back door of the church throw the ushers to the ground and say, okay, come on, you're going with me to prison. And I know, you're going to pull your guns out and you're going to go bang, 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 bang. We're going to defend our rights. And many of the writers or the people that were written about in Fox Book of Martyrs went to the faggots where you were burnt, went and were drowned, and went and were tortured. With no rebellion. 
We've got churches today in America, I don't know where else, in, that they have, been, they have been giving classes by police officers or ex-police officers and how to protect themselves. Meanwhile, in North, in North Carolina, in North Korea, there are Christians meeting, not in a church building. They are meeting somewhere in hiding. And if they get caught and the Chinese catches their people in their country, and they get arrested and they get caught, they'll put up a fight of a struggle, but they'll end up eventually being caught. Paul made havoc of the church. Entering to every house. That's important. That's important. 9-11. Oh, there's a 9-11. What's your emergency? People are not reading the Bible no more. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight. Inquire of the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. Where is Saul praying? At church building? No, he's praying in a house. A house where God knows. Why does God know this house? Because they're probably having prayer meetings. They're probably teaching about Jesus Christ. Could be. What have we been studying? 12-12, Acts 12-12. We're making good time, I hope. I don't want I don't want to do this double time. I want to do it one teaching. 12, 12. James has been killed. Peter is on the rack. And when he had considered the thing, Peter, he came to the house, Mary of the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. The house of Mary. So see, we got the church house. Mary's house is not the church house. Mary's house, where they are praying for Peter, is Mary's house. And we'll see more of that. These houses they are meeting, meeting and meeting and going from house to house are people's houses and not the church house. Mary has given her house for the fellowship of the Lord and the teaching of Jesus Christ and now for prayer. You see that? Before you go running up, oh, it's the church house. No. It is someone's living quarters that they have given themselves for the service of the Lord. There's an offering. There's a cheerful offering and sacrifice to God. God, I want to give my living room, my bedroom, my patio. I want to give something of my house for the service of your saints. Oh, 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 1631, Acts 1631, 1631, 1631. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. The building. So when the rapture happens, every church house is going up. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. The house that can be saved are the family members and the servants of the jailer in Philippi. It is not a building. So calling the church house the building, the church house is wrong. Where two or three are gathered together, Christian. And they spake unto him the words of the Lord and all that were in his house. Who's in his house? Mother, father, wife, children, servant, neighbor, cousin, Uncle Rufus. I don't know. In his house are people and family that are in his house. Not the building. Verse 34, when he had brought them into his house, 
brought them into the family. Family, honey, I got Paul and uh, oh, Silas. Well, who are they? They're people from jail. Ah, no, 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 no. They're they're not they're not criminals. They were in there for the word of God, and they told me about Jesus. I'm saved. He's gonna teach all our family about. Remember Cornelius? When Peter came to Cornelius, he had all his family and friends in the house for Peter to hear, and they got saved. They got saved. 2020. 2020. <coughs> Excuse me. 2020. And how I kept back nothing, Paul's testimony, and profit unto you, but have showed you, okay, and have taught you publicly, okay, from house to house. A Mary's house, a Joseph's house, a Thomas house, another Paul's house, a, a Cyrus's house. People's homes. They were invited people into their home and into their family and into their inner circle so that Christ could be taught and prayers could be wanted, and the Lord's Supper could be taken part of. And it may not be a house. It may be a, 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 a room on a wall. It may be a hut. There are, there are villages in the world where they meet in a hut, not a house. I've seen some... some I mean, they're not even called built. It's a roof in the trees of the rainforest. Just enough to keep the weather elements out. It's not a house. But what's inside, what's under the covers, is the house. The house of God. The people. Plain and simple. All right. Romans 16, 15. Oh, we're out of Acts. Thank you. Romans 16, 15. Yeah. Salute Philologius and Julia and Nerus and his sister, Olympus, and all the saints that were with them. And what am I looking at? 16, oh, 16, 5. That's 15. You learned some new names. You learned some names that were in heaven. 16, 5. Likewise, greet the church. The church. That is in their house. Ooh, look at verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Jesus Christ, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches, the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that's in their house. Who's? Priscilla and Aquila's house. The church that was in the house of Stolly and Lisa Hayward in Norwich, Connecticut, which we name the Guy and Light Bible Baptist Church. When we get into the prospect of a church being a building, we have misplaced, we have not adhered to what the scriptures say. There are people in the Bible who have given God their home. And they had invited the apostles. They had invited saints to come. Come into my home. We're going to have the Lord's Supper. Come into my home. We're going to teach. We're going to talk about Jesus Christ. What about lost people? Going all the world and preach the gospel. You don't bring the world into the church. We read in the book of Acts, they met house to house, breaking bread. Okay, what about witnessing time? They went to the temple. And when it came time for fellowship amongst Christians, they went into a house. Mary opened her house for the time of prayer. And we're not done. We're not done. First, First Corinthians 16. There is more work put into a church building than there is for evangelistic work. My family and I, we have been on the streets, street preaching, sign ministry, gospel tracts since 2005 or six, And we have been on the streets when 
churches have been having cleanup. When churches have been having their, their, their thermometer, we're trying to reach this amount. And you know how many people have come out to help us evangelize? One. But the church is, you know, going about cleaning and all that. First Corinthians 16, verse 19. This is King James Bible believing church. The churches of Asia, okay, salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you. Say hi, how you doing? Much in the Lord with the church. That is in their house. Now we're in coronavirus. Let me ask you something. Is your church doors closed? Many are. What do you do? Open your house up and don't go announcing it to people. Open your house up for some bread and say, hey, come on over to my house. We're going to have a time of prayer. We're going to open up the Bible. We, we know somebody who knows the scriptures. He's going he's gonna to tell us what the scriptures say. We'll have church in the living room. Oh, my. No. We can't. We're we going to have stained glass. We're going to sit on pews. Why? They're sitting in a church house. People own the house. In the Bible. People and saints have given their houses for the Lord. Listen, when if this coronavirus, I don't think it's ever going to end, but when this thing's going to end, you're going to find a lot of church buildings closed up. Because people are not giving money because they're not meeting at the church house. Are pastors going out and meeting with his congregations in their living rooms during this time? I, I would think some are, but most are probably not. Your pastor and your your your, your uh, uh, associate pastor and the deacons of your church who are qualified are supposed to be qualified according to Timothy to be able to teach the word of God. They're supposed to be going out and say, "Okay, we got a six feet rule." So maybe we have five or six people in 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 person's house. We'll meet this day. This sister or this brother has given their their house. We'll meet there. And we'll have some tea or some coffee, some biscuits, something like that. And we're going to open the Bible in their living room. Listen, my wife, Lisa, and I, we did that. We opened up our dining room in Norwich, Connecticut. Until the city came and shut us down. We had people come. We sat in our dining room at a table. And we expounded the word of God. And we prayed. We had the Lord's Supper a few times. And there are people doing it all over the world. It's biblical. Now, am I saying the church building is, is, is not? No, I'm not saying that at all. But what does the Bible say? You can give your room, a room or a couple rooms in your house. Right now, especially when you're, if your church goes, go say, hey, listen, Fred, Sam, come over to my house. We'll get the pastor. We'll get somebody who knows the Bible. We'll get the Sunday school teacher. But some, and we'll have a Bible study and we'll pray in my house. Two or three are gathered. Two or three are gathered. And remember that verse I read in 1 Corinthians 14, where if a wife has a question, she's to go to her husband? I don't know. Like I said, since 2004, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturday, I have read the Bible with my family. I have taught them a chapter out of the Bible, and we have had family prayer together with Sunday morning, Sunday night, and a midweek service in a church building. And I'll match my family, two of them right now in glory, I'll match my family with your family with Bible knowledge and be able to lead someone to the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are many Christians today, sadly, because of coronavirus, because their church building is closed, they're getting nothing from the Bible. And you think, oh, when coronavirus is over and the church is open back, and you think they're going to show back up? 
And we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Colossians 4.15. And people are saying, Stolly, you, you, you're, you're ridiculous. You're, you are, man, we got to get the funny wagon. Have I not been reading from King James Bible? When we're reading, <coughs> excuse me, we're reading the early church was also being persecuted. What if the next step is, listen, there have been, I know personally, pastors who have been arrested. I know is it Alabama or, or New Orleans. One of them states, one of the states that, that touches Florida. That the congregation went to church a midweek service and they were all given a hundred dollar tickets. And I know another church nearby Florida where they where the police were in the parking lot and they say you turn around or you're going to jail. I thought the Constitution said we have rights. What are you gonna do with the next step? Republicans and Democrats, Democrats, Republicans, and the media. What the next step is they shut your church down. What are you going to do? Give up on God? Give up on Jesus Christ? Because it may happen. Listen, Massachusetts, Connecticut, early church days, those, those pilgrim hats turned into the congregational church, and they persecuted Christians in Norwich, Connecticut, where I've studied church history, and they had to go into their houses. And like Paul, they came into the house, and they hauled them off to be jailed. They're doing that in China today. They're meeting in dark alleys. They're meeting in places that are not church buildings, but they're meeting as the church. It may happen in America before the Lord comes. What are you going to do? Give up on God? Look at Colossians chapter 4, verse 15. Salute the brethren. Hi, how you doing? Which are in Laodicea and Nippus and the church which is in his house. So when you say church house and you're trying to, well, it's my building. Does your church building house some a family? Now, there are some churches, you know, yeah, the pastor lives right there. Okay. But there are people in the Bible who has given their house for the service of God. Keep on going. Philemon. One book, one chapter book. Philemon. Paul writing to Philemon. Verse 2. Only one chapter. Philemon. One, two. And our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy Philemon house. The church that's in thy house. You say, well, what do you done if, if your church grew in Norwich? We would go and rent a building. I personally, personally, and I've got it in, in the in the doctrine of the guy in like Bible Baptist Church. I can print it up. I have in our church constitution, we will never purchase land. We will rent and we will spend money and time for growing Christians and we'll spend money and time for evangelism rather for a building. That's my own personal belief. If your church and your, your does anything else, Okay, that's good. Now, I'm going to try to stay as close as to the Bible I can. 1 Peter 2.5. Some people say you're too biblical. No, I'm not. Because I'm a sinner. And I need to still confess my sins. And uh, Hey, I've got problems. But I don't have problems with God. God's got problems with me. I'm going to keep serving the Lord. I'm not giving up. I get I get down. I get out. Because I got so many Christians fighting me. I got so much. The devil hounded me. But I'm going to live to the Bible. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Ye are, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house 
You know what the building is? It's me. You are born again, Bible believing Christian. Are you a Christian? Are you saved by the blood of Jesus Christ? You are the house. And when the rapture happens, your building ain't going up. You're going up. The temple's gone. The dome of the rock is there now. Allah's there. Now that temple's coming back. And it'll be for the nation of Israel, not the church. We are lively stones. Last place, 1 Peter 4, 17. 1 Peter 4, 17. We got to study to show thyself approved unto God. For the judgment is come that the, excuse me, for the time is come that the judgment must begin at the house of God. Door, give yourself a count. Come on, window. Tell, tell, tell us those what we got. Come on, third row of pews. Come on, speak to God. Come on, closet. Speak to God. Give it. Come, that closet has to give it. No, that's not what it is. The time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. I am going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. I will have to give account for everything done in the flesh and everything done for Christ. All the church buildings I've been in are not going to have to give an account for nothing. The very first church I was in, uh, um, it's not a Baptist church no longer. I have been in where we met as a church. I have been in, it's been Masonic. We rented. You think you're going to see a Masonic lodge in heaven? <laughs> you know how much idols and imagery and, and garbage? So we've got to get off. Okay, I mean, you want to have a church? Okay, that's fine. Me personally, no. But hey, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a place to gather. It's a place to meet. But the Bible says there were people that met in their houses. And at the time of coronavirus, there may be people that you assembled with at your church building who are saved. They don't have a computer. They don't have a smartphone. They can't get live. How about if you say, Lord, you show us somebody to come into our house and we'll open up our house. We'll serve you. And wouldn't it be great if God started a church from your living room, your dining room, uh, a garage, whatever you have, a driveway? That's where a lot of the churches started from. But the biblical form met in your house. The last night, the Lord's Supper, where did we read that Jesus said to the disciples? You know, you see the man, he's carrying the water. Where do you go? He's going to bring you to a house. And he'll show you a large upper room and what? The house. The first meeting of the church in Acts chapter 2, they met in a house. In Acts chapter 2, they went to the temple preaching the gospel. Then they came and gathered together at the house. 